before the controllers. If you wanted to program movements with components, it was necessary to program it by code in the code script of the machine. Using the dedicated functions of each component it is possible to modify, rotate or move each element. In the new version of Machine Simulator 3, we have available a new tool, the controllers, which will allow us to perform these same actions but without writing any line of code. In this tutorial we will show you how to perform a simple mechanism consisting of a rotary table with a pneumatic cylinder, with a digital output the table will rotate 45 degrees clockwise, and another digital output to rotate 45 degrees counterclockwise. The cylinder will rotate with the table and through a digital output will activate the piston and with another it will retreat. Let's see a practical example. Select static element from the base components category of the components library. Now, I'm going to change the model assigned to the component to change its appearance. Once selected, we will change the size of the model and the component to leave the desired dimensions. The red cube line delimits the physical size of the element. Click on the Add New Controller button in the Element Properties grid. Change the name of the controller so that it is easy to identify what it does. Click on Type to select the desired type of controller, in our case we will select Animation Rotate. The trigger is the function that will trigger the controller, and may be conditioned by various options, in our case we will select Digital Output and write the number 0. To indicate that when the digital output 0 is activated, the controller will start. In the parameters section, we will configure the behavior of our controller, select the axis of rotation, y, the degrees that the component will rotate, the speed and the direction of rotation. Once finished, we will copy the controller and paste it to prepare the turn in the other direction. In this controller we will change the name, the number of the output that will activate the trigger, the 1, and we will change the turn direction. Now let's see how it works. It is time to create the pneumatic cylinder, we will insert another static element, we will change the model and the shape. Ok, once finalized we will verify how it works. But the problem that we will see is that the cylinder does not rotate together with the table, this is because they are not paired. To solve this, 
we drag the component of the cylinder into the component of the turntable. Then, now that the cylinder is a child of the table, it will rotate along with it. Now we will create the mobile part of the cylinder, the piston. For this we copy the cylinder and paste it, changing the position, the model assigned to the component and giving it the right size. Now we must assign the new controllers to the piston, so that it can move. We will add a new controller, of the move type, instead of animation move, since move has greater precision in the use of physics. To activate the trigger we will select the digital output too. The axis of advance of the movement will be the Z axis. We will select the speed and the relative position of movement, in doing so we will see a help indicator to see the final position where it will go. Adjust the value until you get the desired displacement. We can also select the audio track that will be played when the controller is run. Now we will copy and paste the controller to perform the opposite movement. We will change the name, the digital output that activates it and the direction of the displacement. Great, we see that it works correctly, but there is a problem, since the move controller works in a relative way, if we do not limit it, every time we activate its condition the quantity will move from the last position. This is not correct and we must solve it. For this we will use the pre-actions, post-actions and conditions. The pre-actions and post-actions are used to activate or deactivate digital signals before and after executing the controller. We will select the digital inputs that will be activated and deactivated before and after making the movements so that the PLC knows in what position the piston is. 
Now you can see how the PLC inputs are activated when the movements are finished and how they are deactivated when they are started. But we lack the initial condition that informs that the piston is retracted, for this we created a new controller, which will have a special name, in it, which means that it will only start once when the machine goes into simulation mode. In this controller we will select the IO signals function to activate the digital input that informs that the piston is retracted. OK, we have it. Now is the time to use the conditions. With them we can condition the triggers to activate only in certain circumstances. Now we will force that can only move if we are in the right condition. To move the piston forward, we will create the condition of having the digital input number 0 active. To move the piston back, we will create the condition of having the active digital input number 1. Now we can check how our system works correctly. Let's check the operation with a little physics, making some work parts interact with the system. OK, we have programmed the behavior of our machine without using a single line of code thanks to the new controller tool.